Uh, as I've been introduced, my name is Kama Ngugi. Or for the purposes of this event, I'm on a DK. And I, I don't know where to start. This is one of those moments where I get what we call stage flight. I'm on, on the run. Because who would have imagined, who would have imagined that an idea of people that were seated somewhere, I know I've never disclosed this to many people, were seated somewhere in exile, in a cold place, I would say, because it was winter. And the only thing that had brought us together was being in exile because of standing up for human rights. And then, one of them who had studied a little bit better in terms of what was going on at the international level, had recognized that there is a new mechanism. The UN has recognized that human rights defenders should be respected. They need to be protected because of the work that they do. And he decided that maybe it's time we focused on where we came from. Maybe we should try. And he took a serious risk, left his job, and took the risk to come to the region to set up a mechanism for the protection of human rights defenders. He's present with us and he will be speaking with us, Hassan Shire. Thank you so much for bringing the idea to the region. Because it's based on that idea that you brought to the region that you are able to start conversing with the friends from, the region, from Kenya, human rights defenders from Kenya, and ask them, guys, I know that you guys are always at the forefront. I know the risks that activists face in my country. What are you guys doing about it? And he started a conversation with our colleagues from Kenya National Commission of Human Rights. I know very well that Caro at that time was actually there. Um, started a conversation with Independent Medical Legal Unit, IMLU, Kenya Human Rights Commission, AFRICOG. I remember all those days as if it's just yesterday. But the most important thing is that uh, Kenya National Commission and IMLU agreed to form, to have a workshop, just a workshop of a few people, few activists that were willing to come to Nairobi. And that meeting took place in the last week of November of 2007. I know we all talk about 2007 in terms of post-election conflict, but we have a different memories. We have the first convening that brought together a activists from across the country. And what I'm proud about is that those very human rights defenders are in the room. They are the people that founded the dream together with Hassan and others. So and I can see over there my colleagues who will be later be introduced who founded the idea. So salute to some of my colleagues there on that table that I see who helped to found the coalition. <laughs> if you could still stand wherever you are. Muli, I can see you. I can see Caleb somewhere. I see Mama. Where is Mama? Habiba? Oh, you're on that side? I know so many of you, and I know some of us others are not here. But the most important thing that that dream has been realized through pain, struggles, but above all, success. So today we are here to celebrate the success of 10 years. First 10 years, of course, in first five years, already, of course, incubating the idea. But in the last most five years, actually strengthening the structure of the National Coalition of Human Rights Defenders. So today we are only here to do one thing, to celebrate. So welcome to the celebration dinner of the National Coalition of, of Human Rights Defenders at 10 years. The night is morning. The sky is crying pain. It is my share. Fear is my heart. Robbed by the death of my fellow citizens who are butchered, stoned, and slaughtered like animals. My heart hopes will never retreat because I try to feel it is lies, but it knows the truth, Mama. 
Mama, yes, I know you never raised a coward, but this really is so real to me. I mean, I can't handle it, see? You and I in the shoe of a street kid who is running up and down in the street begging for food and yet no one is showing concern including you. And you are the reason to why the child is suffering. Yes, you. Ni wewe wata kukata kata. Si ni wewe unikata kata. Baba kena panga tijuni mjaluo. Ni unipika mama kena mawe together tijuni mkikuyu blood. Blood iliku ina flow kari batana juwa vile watu walikatana na mawe kupigana. Wengi saini viwete, yako wapi mpenzi uliku umeka pete, uliza utembelewe na mashete. How does it feel to lose the love of your life? As a, as a fighter of the Maasai rights, from the girl child rights, this evening I'm from speaking to about 300 girls. You know Narok, we are living with teenage pregnancies. And that is the kind of people that we are. We fight at the grassroots level and we fight even without any means. I want also to take this opportunity to thank our supporters and donors and all that that makes us move. Thank you so much because you have recognized the work that we do as a coalition. Without your support, we would be somewhere but not very far away. I don't know how many of you are in the house, but... Uh, we, I want to say as a chairperson that we recognize you. I am extremely happy as a mother of the coalition. Uh, they call me mama of the coalition. And I'm proud to be one of the founders of the coalition. And, um, I, I, and I am proud to say that we have new blood in the organization that will take this this father, even as we retire, although usually people don't retire from fighting for the rights of others. Enjoy your evening, and if we don't meet again, I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good evening. So, uh, friends, the Executive Director of the National Coalition for Human Rights Defenders, Kamau, the Chair of the Board, the donors who are also supporting the coalition here in various embassies and others, but also more importantly, you should welcome as a community here, Oxfam coming now to Africa, and the Deputy uh, Director for East Africa, Horn of Africa, and Great Lakes region, this sub-region, is here with us, Bita Kamilinji. Can you stand, Bita? So you welcome Bita in, 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 in Nairobi, he's from Kampala, very good friend of us. Uh, he was the Oxfam country director before. And many human rights defenders who are here. Before I call the people who co-founded this, let me just go small, small, small talk about the entire idea. For people who are here, this year we are celebrating 70 years of the UDHR when the world recognizes it, the, the, the fundamental human rights of people, the indivisibility, equality, justice, all the 30 articles of UDHR focuses about our rights, it's our document. And then also we are celebrating 20 years of when the world recognizes the tremendous value of the work you do every day, recognizing the work of human rights defenders in total at the General Assembly. I was standing by the, 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 the cello in, in France, in Paris, when the document was signed. And those of you who are old enough, you may recall the same day, is the day Binochet, General Binochet lost the immunity he used to have. House of Lords of UK voted removing his immunity so that prosecutor from Spain can serve a restaurant and take him back home. So there was a twin achievement on the 9th of December 1998. But the world, after the Secretary General, I mean, invited Hino Jirani to be his representative for the human rights defenders. Still, human rights defenders are maimed, jailed, arrested, organization spanned, and there was no networks and coalitions to support those who are on the run. So we questioned that. I myself, I was a victim. 
I, I was a refugee, I was in a limbo. So we question it. The value of all these mechanisms, including European Union mechanisms, the African Commission mechanism, what, what effectively that value is for human rights defenders on the ground who are running because of oppression, because of, of challenge. So we, we conducted research at, at, the, at, at the university, York University in Canada, and we found outcome of four. And those four outcomes of that research have formed the first network ever bringing together human rights defenders to take the matters of their protection into their own hands and don't wait someone to issue statements in New York or in Geneva calling certain governments to respect the lives and all that. But we said, no, we let us now network and bring our own matters of protection in our own hands. So that was, that was a 2005, November, in Entebbe. A group of Kenyans, a very strong delegation, came as founding members of that. And we have to tonight pray and also observe one minute. A one person who is not with us today of that group who were founded, Miriam Kahiga. Join me, please, in standing and observing one minute. Miriam was the head of the Amnesty International Kenya section, and she came to Kampala as a part of the Kenyan delegation. But Kenyan delegation requested, when we formed the network, the first national coalition has to be in Kenya. So 2005, we organized in 2006 the journalists, and the first move that we did as a network was to come to Kampala at the Lena Mount, as Kamau said, with consultation with the National Human Rights Institution, with major human rights organizations and defenders at large, and we converge it here and form it the National Coalition for Human Rights Defenders. And today I'm so happy to see that still founders are around, and again, we have multiplied various young, prevalent activists all over Kenya now are ready to carry on the torch. May I invite the founding members who have been at the Lena Mount Hotel in 2007 to come forward and join me here. I met on Kenya Airways flight coming from the African Commission with the Maasai Regalia. And I asked it, it was, I think, June. I asked it, Mary, nice to meet you. We are organizing a, a, a coalition in Kenya. You must be an activist since you came to the African Yes, I am activating for the rights of women in Maasai land, indigenous communities. And uh, so we had a long conversation, and, she, and we invited her, Mary, to be the keynote speaker of the launch. Since that time, Mary, she has never turned it back human rights given that she has been in one way or another within you and among you. I recognize you here today. And all of you here, as you can see the number of people, as you can see the number of people who are sitting here, they have not limited themselves to the national coalition. Rather, they sought you out in every county. They came and, 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 and give you solidarity and brought you together tonight. And I think tonight these are the historians of this movement in this country, and they deserve to be recognized, and they deserve to be uploaded the tremendous work and value they did. And uh, please, from the bottom of my heart, I sincerely say thank you so much for doing this important work. Karibun Good evening. Good evening. I'm Jambo. Comrade power. power! Comrade power! power. Comrade power. power! Thank you very much. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and my comrades, I'm so excited to be here this evening. Courage without wisdom is not sustainable. Bravery and wisdom without integrity is useless. Ensure that you have the three attributes, wisdom, integrity, and courage. The Kenya National Commission on Human Rights 
is a member of the National Legal Aid and Service Board. And allow me to bring this here because I think it's very crucial in terms of the growth of human rights defenders in Kenya. The Legal Aid Act, which many who are seated here that I know were very instrumental in bringing it into play, and the human rights policy has a space for human rights defenders. However, in that act, human rights defenders are known as and identified as paralegals. It therefore means, as human rights defenders, you need to up your skills and ensure that you are trained as paralegals and you're part of the PASUNE, that is the Paralegal Support Network, which has a sitting on the Legal Aid Service Board. Why is this important? This is because in terms of the structures of how the nation will roll out legal aid, aid to everyone, there will be justice advisory centers in every county who are going to be, which are going to be run by the human rights defenders. The first priority is to the paralegals. So I would want you to up your skills as paralegals so that you can be the pioneers you can transform the institutions that you have to be those justice advisory centers because this is work that you're already doing. And this will give you better and more latitude as you engage with the various police stations, the prisons, the judiciary, the law society of Kenya branches, the council of elders, amongst others. So I urge you to be as organized as the lawyers and the magistrates and judges are as human rights defenders. This is very important because if we are to develop the human rights movement in this country, we need to be more coordinated, more organized, and together as a movement. As the, the National Commission on Human Rights, we have conducted trainings with magistrates and judges. And why is this important? This is very important because they, we have had special trainings with them on who and the role of human rights defenders. You know, as um, I can't remember who was here in front, said that um, they are good, um, they visit the courts quite often. No, it was in the video. When you go before a judge or a magistrate, usually the magistrate, they have no notion or they have no concept of human rights defenders. So we've had a discussion with them on who and their, and their role, so that as that case is prosecuted, they appreciate where you come from. And this is no accident because we have session of paper number three of 2014, which is the only human rights policy and action plan in this country. Unfortunately, many of us have no memory of that session of paper. Session of paper number three of 2014. I urge you all to read it and familiarize yourself with it because this is a document that you hold each state institution to account, including our own. Finally, as I end, I would like to congratulate the coalition, the National Coalition of Human Rights Defenders. <laughs> as you celebrate 10 years, I have seen the coalition grow. I have seen it through Kamau, who I know longer than maybe he knows that I know him. Develop into an institution that even us at the National Commission on Human Rights rely on for human rights defender protection, for human rights defender training. Therefore, this coalition is no ordinary civil society institution. How I wish the coalition had been formed 20 years or 30 years ago because there are many human rights defenders we would not have lost. Because we would have had mechanisms of protection, mechanisms of supporting, mechanisms of training the human rights defenders. I was very touched when Bwanashire uh, told us to have a minute of silence for Miriam Kahiga. She was one of the formidable human rights defenders, even before I myself could conceptualize the word human rights. 
So I thank you all as I stand here and the coalition and the leadership of the national coalition uh, with the, under the leadership of Mueshimiwa. I thank you all for standing in the gap even when things were very difficult in this country and ensuring that this institution stood, that this institution continues to guide and this institution continues to remain meaningful not only to the human rights defenders but also to the people of this republic. I leave you with the words of Roger Baldwin. Baldwin. So long as we have enough people in the country willing to fight for their rights, we'll be called a democracy. So long as we have enough people in this country willing to fight for their rights, we shall be called a democracy. And in this country, we need more than enough people to fight for this country so that we can remain the democracy envisaged in our constitution, 2010. Aluta, continua. There are many brave men and women in this room this evening. But there's one man among men in particular who has been ignored, who has been laughed at, who has been fought, and now who is winning every day in the courts and on the streets and winning people's hearts. Do we know who that is? Yes. What's his name? Okia. Viva Okia Omtata Viva. To begin with, I must uh, thank the organizers of this occasion, distinguished guests, and my fellow comrades in the struggle for making this possible. Because one of the things that have undermined our struggle is the, the high moral rectitude we give ourselves, or the high moral table, whereby we are unable to engage across, across what we call ourselves and them. Me, I would really pray that we learn to engage and take over those spaces. We begin thinking of not being human rights defenders who are protecting a position that is being attacked to being human rights attackers. We go on the offensive and take over the republic so that we, have not to do, we don't have to defend because we shall, we shall be the human rights people in power. Let us not get caught up in the, in the narrative of defending. Let us get to the narrative of there being no need to defend human rights. Let human rights be the, the new normal of what we do. So with the, the kind of recognition you give me, then I don't, I don't, I don't become a lone ranger. I become a part of a system. And so what you have really done for me is that you have made me part, you have declared that I'm really part of a family. I'm not a lone wolf. There are very many other wolves that can eat you if you mess with me. So, and I thank you very much for that because that kind of solidarity offers protection. That kind of solidarity offers protection and the most important thing we need is protection. And so those few remarks, I really thank the organizers of this occasion and I pray and plead with you wherever you are that we stay together. Thank you.